<laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. Hello, and welcome to Bitcoin for Humans. Um, so today we're gonna to talk about property rights. And this is um, because I made the cardinal mistake of seeing that somebody was wrong on the internet. And I, I thought I was gonna, I was gonna fix that. Uh, and in particular, it was an argument made that uh, Bitcoin is worthless because it has no property rights because governments won't like it effectively. Um, and it's, I personally think that's complete nonsense. So I thought I would actually explain in a little bit of detail using the story of Billy the Bully and Tiny Timmy here, like how property rights actually work and the very real impact that Bitcoin has on that and why that's good for human rights. So let's get started. So first of all, let's take property rights and we'll just pop up over here and we'll read that Article 17 of the International Charter of Human Rights suggests that everybody should have the right to own property either um, on their own or in free association with others and that it shall not be arbitrarily removed. So we know that it's good if we like our human rights that, you know, we should like property rights. It should be a good thing. It helps people out, helps them get ahead over time. So let's go to our story down here with Billy and Timmy. Now, Billy's a bully and Timmy's got a bag of money and he's tiny. So what Billy's gonna do is he's gonna come up to Billy, to Timmy and say, give me your money. And Timmy is gonna, gonna think about this. He's gonna say, look, Billy's double my height. I can either give Billy the money and he might go away. Or I can not give Billy the money and he might just beat the crap out of me and then he might just take my money. So it feels like the better answer here is to give Billy the money. And that's sort of how that relationship might exist. And then the argument that was being made today was that the property rights only exist when there's a government there to enforce them in some way. And so really in this situation, what you'd be looking at is that the teacher comes along and says, stop that Billy. And Billy says, okay, I will stop. <laughs> yeah, I think if, as we all know in real life, Billy would probably just say, you got lucky this time to me, and then five minutes later, he'd be back at it. So you probably need a better solution to this problem. Um, whilst I do think that, you know, we do rely somewhat on governments to enforce property rights, it is part of what we expect in a society. It's actually often done through other means by dealing with the incentives that I'm gonna get onto in a minute. So when we look at this relationship, what I would suggest is that there's a little balancing equation that's going on here which is that Billy on the one hand is saying, look, I've got some knowledge and an amount of force that I can use. And then on the other side of this balancing equation, he's looking at the risk and reward. So when Billy threatens Timmy, what he's really doing is saying, I can see that you've got a big bag of money and I can see that you're small. And so when I weigh up the risk reward here, what I'm thinking is the reward is that big bag of money you know, I know I've got the force or the ability to take it from you, so I could do that. And the reward is I get the money. Now, he's also going to be thinking through the risk and just saying, well, what if, you know, the other 20 billies then gang up on me and I'm the small one and they kick the crap out of me because they get a bit sick of this. So he does have some things that hold him back and like societal norms, but... This is the equation that, that Billy's got in his head. And you see a similar equation in other circumstances. So obviously nation state war is a good one. So over here, we've got a little nation state war reflecting what would have happened in World War II. So as the, the German army just advanced across Europe, they were seizing gold from a lot of the, the cities that they were going through. So gold, old artworks, lots of that sort of stuff ended up in vaults tucked away under the Swiss mansions. Um, so what a lot of the, the countries did was that they got their gold and they stuck it on a boat or a ship or a truck and eventually a boat. So here's the SS, tons of gold, just shipping lots of gold across the Atlantic Ocean. So it fucks right off to America. <laughs> That's what happened with all the gold during Europe in Europe during the Second World War, um, which coincidentally is why America enjoyed such a position of privilege when they were remaking the monetary system um, back in the 50s is they owned everybody's gold, so they dictated terms. Um, so that's one option that you've got there is that you can start to hide what you've got. So if we, if we took Timmy and we got rid of this bag of money, well then Billy's equation has been, it's been impacted because they're saying, well, I don't actually know how much, how much money Billy's got and maybe for $10,000 in the school playground, Billy would definitely beat up 
Timmy and then risk the wrath of the 50 other Timmies that could come back at him. But for $10, maybe, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it still is. Who knows? But this kind of gets to the guts of what, what Bitcoin does, is that it fixes the knowledge force problem. It does, does it in two ways. One is it allows Timmy to hold that money in a place where Billy doesn't know it's there. So Billy now lacks some knowledge of like what the reward will be. He has to guess at that reward. And the second is that it actually impacts the, the amount of force that Billy can bring to bear on Timmy. So in this instance, Billy could beat up Timmy, but because Timmy's got his, his money in his Bitcoin wallet, unless Timmy gives him the, the codes to that wallet, Billy can't take it. So not only can he effectively hide the money from Billy the Bully, he can also refuse to give it to Billy the Bully. So now Billy has got a different equation that he has to look at to say, okay, well, you know, I guess I can still use this force, but I don't know how much money I'm gonna get. And I actually won't get the money even if I use the force. So maybe my threat is a lot emptier than it once was. You know, when I could just, he could just beat you up and take the bag of money that was lying there on the floor, you had, it was a different proposition. Now that it can't be taken, even if he beats you up, you change the rules of the game. Now, there's many ways that that can be made more complex as well around how and where Timmy can hide that, that money using Bitcoin and the various property rights that it gives him. But this is the guts of like why you gain strong property rights through Bitcoin, is that it really changes the amount of force that can be brought to bear. So without your consent, nobody can take your Bitcoin away from you. They can take it with your consent, but it gives you optionality around whether you consent to that or not. And that is the, the guts of our property rights. All right, I hope you found that useful. Um, any questions, let me know. Cheers, peace out.